Hello and welcome back to the channel. Hope you are all well and thank you very much for coming over and watching another video. So a little while ago I stuck out the video with the um, fit and the outboard turning kit to the CL3, CL4 or the CL3 or the CL models of record power lathes. Um, great kit. I think it's a really good idea that that makes it going from you can turn 12 inch bowls up to whatever. Uh, I think it's a really good idea. The only issue I have is that when you turn the headstock around to do that ball turn them, it makes all your controls at the back. So therefore you have to reach over your workpiece to um, turn your machine off, turn your machine on and vary, that vary the speed, which to me is not really the safest idea. Um, reaching over your workpiece to, to be able to control the machine is not, really what we should should be doing or should be promoting because uh, safe practice is one of the most important things so this got me thinking and in the video i said about trying to do a remote stop start so we could perhaps have a uh, another stop start on the machine somewhere so when you were doing outboard turning we could be more controlling of the stop start and speed and also we wasn't reaching over our piece to operate our machine. So I spoke to Record Power and um, they said, yes, it could be done, but they wasn't gonna tell me how to do it because of obviously safety reasons. And I said, yeah, I totally agree with that. And the other thing they said was that if your machine is under warranty and you alter electrics, then you will be voiding the warranty on your machine, which I totally understand that as well. So lucky enough, my machine is just out of warranty. So I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna actually try, well, I'm not actually gonna try, I'm gonna add a remote stop start um, on the machine. So I've had a look at the wiring diagram. Um, there's only three wires that go to the uh, PLC or the inverter. Uh, the reason these machines got inverters in them is because the motor is a three phase motor, uh, but it runs on 240. So what they have to do is they have to have a, an inverter to convert 240 into three phase to uh, obviously run the motor. So what this means is the stop start buttons only work on signals rather than the same system like a normal machine with an NVR switch, uh, which is a, a volt locking switch. So as soon as you press the start button, voltage locks it in until you press the stop button, which then breaks the voltage going to the start button, which therefore stops um, the, the machine. And the good thing with an NVR switch is that if you have a power cut while you're using the machine, um, if you go away, come back and the power comes on, the machine won't start until you press the start button again. So NVR switches are safe, but our PLC or our inverter does exactly the same as that, just a little bit more technical. So I think, well, I know that I can connect into the controller and make a remote stop start. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I bought a few things to get me started. I'm still waiting on a couple of bits, but I bought a few things to start get me started. So the first thing I bought was uh, stop start button. Uh, this is an NVR button. Uh, each NVR button has four terminals, but we're only going to use two terminals off of each one because, like I say, we only want signals and not a, a constant hold voltage. So, um, but I'll explain more of that as we go into it. So, I've got emergency stop, lockdown, no emergency stop, same as what I've got on this machine here, and then my start button. So, perfect for that. I've the other thing I've got as well is some four core cable. Uh, this is 24 volt automotive cable, uh, 0.5 of a millimeter cable, same size as what's on the machine now. We don't need a massive amount of uh, draw on the or high ampage cables because we're only using them as signals, not actually really uh, running constant power for them. Um, the actual signal that comes from the PLC or the inverter 
is only 24 volts anyway, so we don't need a massive amount of draw cable. Like I said, I need three wires, but I've got four just in case we want a spare for something else. Um, I've also got some plugs. I was gonna originally connect it, so it was constantly connected to the back of the machine. Um, and then I thought, if I ever wanna remove it, I've gotta disconnect the machine, take it all apart, disconnect it inside. And I thought for the sake of a price of a few plugs, I will put them on. So what I've got is I've got these three pin bits that'll go into the back of the control panel. And then we've got a plug that's gonna go onto our, um, our start stop remote. And then these will just come together and they've got a collar that just screws together to, so they can't vibrate apart. And then these also come with little dust caps. So if I ever remove them and I, and I don't want the remote on it, I can just put the dust cap over them to um, keep all the dust and dirt out of them. So I've got those. Uh, the other thing I've got at the moment is I've got some uh, magnetic sticky pads. The reason being is to stick to the back of the stop start so that we can move our stop start um, around the machine. I noticed that Record Power and Axminish and a few other manufacturers who have a remote stop start, they actually have a uh, uh, magnetic pad on the back to, so you can move about. So I thought I'd copy them really. So what I'm waiting for is, I'm waiting for a potentiometer, so for the speed controller, and I'm also waiting for a two position switch. Um, two, posi two position switch is to break the five volt feed to the potentiometer or the speed controller on the machine, and then switch it over to the potentiometer or speed controller on our, on our stop start box. The reason I'm doing this is because I thought that having two potentiometers trying to send different ohms to the PLC control board might confuse the control board a little bit and um, it may cause a bit of issue. So I thought if I'm using the speed controller on the machine as normal, I can have it set on position one. If I want to use the speed controller on the external or remote stop start, flick it over to position two. And what that does is that just gets rid of that compensating of two different devices trying to send two different ohm signals because they just work on ohms and if one's sending let's say three ohms through and the other one's sending four ohms through then it's going to be issue it could end up damaging the the um the inverter or the the uh, plc and that's not what we want to do we don't we want to be as safe and secure as possible so on safety issue obviously if you're not competent of electrical work then please 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 do not um, uh, attempt to do what I'm going to do. Um, this is maybe the first and maybe the last time I'm going to show electrical work on the channel. The reason being is I'm not 100% happy doing showing guys or people, you folks, um, electrical work on the channel. I'm competent in doing what I'm doing, um, but if you're not, then please don't attempt to do what I'm about to do. Again, if your warranty is still, uh, still active on your machine, don't attempt to do it either because you will make your warranty void. Um, but like I say, I don't take any responsibility for your safety. You're, you're responsible for your own safety. and I don't take any responsibility for the damage you do to your machines. So like I say, if you're not competent and you're not 100% sure what you're doing, then please don't attempt to do it. With saying that, let's get the camera moved. Let's get the cover removed and we'll go through and have a look and see um, what wires do what and see what we can do. It's worth a try. Got nothing to lose, have we? Let's go for it. Right, so here we are, our control box. First thing we need to do is take this front off. So there are 12 screws holding this on. So we're just gonna take these 12 screws out so we can get access to our inside. Make sure that you have unplugged, turned off and unplugged your machine from the mains power before you remove this front cover as you don't want to be removing this cover with the mains power connected. So there's three screws in the bottom of this so we just need to return, rotate this so we can get these three screws out of the bottom. That's our 12 screws out. So we'll just turn that back round. So we'll just remove. So I've got all the screws out now. First thing you want to make sure you have done is disconnect your machine from the mains. 
um, not just turned off at the mains, unplugged as well. Make sure the plug is out of the way. Um, also give it a few, um, a little while to discharge because your inverter will hold charge a little bit longer than when you've unplugged it, just to give it a chance to discharge, right. So we've got our screws removed. We're now gonna take the cover off. So inside here, it's quite empty considering really. Um, this is your PLC or your controller. Uh, mains power coming in, 240 volt. Power going out to your motor, which is that cable there, which is in the back of the machine there. Um, obviously earth wires. This wire here, three core wire, is what re uh, feeds the potentiometer, which is the one for our speed control. And then we've got <coughs> our, our emergency stop button and our power button. So three wires come from the controller. Um, this wire here is a 24 volt feed into our switch and that's the looped then to our, or our emergency stop, sorry, then that's looped into our start button. Now what that does, that just gives a 24 volt supply to each switch. Now, the, the way the machine works is it relies on 24 volt signals to tell the PLC to start the motor. So if your emergency stops pushed in um, and you press your start button, as soon as you press your start button, it's making a contact between uh, the positive side and the open side of the, of the wire. So it's sending a signal through the wire back to the PLC to say they want to start the machine. If the emergency stops pushed in, there is no signal feed going to the PLC from the, the 24 volt feed signal wire on the emergency stop. So pushing the emergency stop in just breaks the 24 volt flow through this connection. So the PLC is gonna go, they want to start, but the emergency stop is still engaged because we haven't got a signal from our emergency stop button. So it won't start the machine. So if you take out, disengage the emergency stop, then press your power button. The PLC is going to go, right, we've got a signal from our start button. We've also now got a signal from our emergency stop saying that the emergency stop is disengaged because we've got a 24 volt feed coming back to our PLC. We can start the motor. So it will start the motor. And that's how it works. Um, like I said before, NVR switch is where the voltage goes into the switch and it locks the switch down as it, um, runs until the voltage is disconnected with these all we're doing is we're sending signals to our PLC or our inverter which is doing all the hard work for us it's basically like a, a mini computer so what I want to do is I want to connect into these existing switches um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to bring, bring in a wire from my remote start into the side of one of these doesn't matter which side it is they're both 24 volts that will give me a 24 volt signal to my remote stop start. And then we will bring another wire into, from the emergency stop into number two um, on this terminal here. And then from the start will be number four on this terminal here. Now the reason I'm connecting to the switches rather than the PLC is because number one, these are easier to get to. Um, and there's a room for another wire in the other side. And number two, I don't really want to be messing around with the wiring on the PLC because they are quite delicate. So that's for that. And then we're going to then bring those wires from that into our socket that we're actually going to mount our socket, our female side of our socket in the back of this cabinet here. So our wires um, for our um, remote stop start will come down the back of the machine and can go the same sort of route as what the existing wires do to keep it all nice and tidy. So we're going to put two sockets in the back of there, one for our remote stop start and then the other one's going to be for our potentiometer. Potentiometer is very similar. Um, if we take off, these are our potentiometer wires. We've got a 5 volt AI1 and COM uh, or common. So what I'm, doing, I'm going to be taking this 5 volt signal wire out of here and that will be going to one side of my switch. A signal a 5 volt wire from here to the the common of the switch and then on the other side of the switch will be going to my potentiometer on my uh, remote stop start and like I said before that will give me my uh, position one for the speed control on this panel 
position two for the speed control on the other panel to stop any interference and confusion between the two uh, potentiometers. Hopefully that's gonna work, but until we try it, we're not gonna know. But because we're not doing no major overhaul electrics, if it doesn't work, we can just uh, convert it back. But I'm sure it will work. So first things first is we're gonna mount our sockets in the back there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get, uh, work out what size they are, turn it so we can see a bit better, and then I will come back when I've got everything ready to start drilling some holes. I've marked where I'm gonna go, 16 millimeter holes I need. So first thing I'm gonna do is gonna put a pipe, I actually need a dot punch first, dot punch that. dot punch it, we'll get a pilot hole through and then we can run our hole saw through to get our 16mm hole. So first things first, using a 4mm bit, making sure there's no wires on the other side that we're going to hit. a step a piece red I've painted the I've marked put a marker pen on it where I need to go how deep I need to go 16 millimeters but I'm gonna stop there and just double check it because I've done it before and sometimes Just going to go through the other side just to get rid of the burrs. We'll take off our tape. Now, what we need to do is we need to make sure we put our dust thing on it just in case we ever want to use it. Right, so what we need to do now is just make sure these fit, which they do. Perfect. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna wire these before I fit them. Uh, the reason being is gonna be a right pain to solder those while I'm inside. So I'm gonna take these over to the bench and solder some fly wires on these or extended wires on these long enough so we can get so connected to where we need to be connected to and then uh, we can then mount these onto there so uh, let's get over to the bench and get these soldered up and uh, we'll see what we can do so what we're going to do is going to connect our wires to our female no our male side of our socket which is the bit that's going to go in our panel then so i've got a pair of mold grips here that i'm just going to grab this in just basically so it stops moving about so it's easier um, and it doesn't keep moving about while I'm trying to solder it up so we're just going to move that round so it's actually the terminals are upright so we've got our wires I've stripped the white the green and the red wires that we're going to do on this one and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do get rid of one of the other wires and use the brown on the other one so the switches are so I know which uh, wires come from which socket, which makes life a little bit easier. So the first thing we need to do is we need to put some solder on our wires, just so um, they flow a little bit better on our um, socket. So we're just gently gonna solder these up just to put some solder on these wires here. Want a nice amount on them so they flow a little bit easier. So now we need to put some solder onto our socket. So what we need to do is we need, just need to heat these up a little bit before the solder is going to flow and stick to our socket. So just getting the terminals, not too hot so it melts the inside, but hot enough to obviously stick to the, uh, the metal. 
and then just on that side there you perhaps can't see what I'm doing because I've got my arm in the way so like I say we're not getting it too hot that it melts the oops is my head in the way head's always in the way um, we're not getting it too hot so it melts the switch or the socket but we're getting it hot enough to flow into our uh, terminal so what the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some heat shrink tubing over these so once these are soldered up we can bring the heat shrink tubing back over the connection and that will allow it to uh, just give it a little bit of insulation to make it a little bit more secure so we're just going to put our first one on the back there and we'll put our green on the top here I don't know if you can really see this because I should imagine my hands in the way oh no you can see uh, so the green one will be on the top there keeping our heat shrink out of the way make sure we get a nice connection and then a white will be on the bottom one just there just like so. good idea to hold hold of the wire till the solder um, so, this, so the solder drops or cools off right so there is our uh, soldering so we're just going to let that cool down a little bit and then we'll slide our heat shrink over the top of that and uh, solder it up, or just heat shrink it up so that's now cool enough so we've got a heat shrink over the top little blowtorch just to shrink that and what that does is that just gives it a little bit of insulation protection and a little bit more security as well so now that's all done and um, we can go back over to the machine and install this one and um, what I'll do is I'll do the other one off camera and um, I'll come back to you when we're ready to fit in the machine so now we can install these it doesn't matter which one goes in which for now but what I will do is I will mark them um, when we get oops, when we get um, to a stage where we're putting in our sockets so we know which socket is which so we're just going to put on the dust shield so that we can um, if we ever need to we've got the dust shield there to connect that goes between the casing and our piece so we'll just move that up like so so we'll put that one in the bottom thread our wire through what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and line it up because there's a there's a, a, a lockout, a little nub, what the um, what they locate into. I'm going to try and keep it at the top, just so it makes it a little bit easier to um, <coughs> excuse me connect our socket into. <coughs> so there's a little bit of a washer there and the ring. We'll just start those. Gonna spin that round to the top. And I'm just gonna do that finger tight for now, and then we'll do them up a little bit tighter. That's good now because that means we've got that dust cap there if we ever need it. So that's the first one in. So we'll do the same on the second. Looks quite neat and tidy. So not out of place. Got our dust caps over them, so we'll put those over for now. So we get the extension made up. Bring all that off. So that's the back piece done. So we'll turn it and uh, we will have a look on the inside and see what we need to connect on the inside. So I guess I've decided to use the top socket for my stop start and then I'll use the bottom socket for my potentiometer, which obviously I can't do at the moment because we're waiting for the switch to come. But we can get this one done. So. I've got my three wires, obviously we're keeping the brown for a spare just in case. So that's just taped back out of the way. There's no current going through it because it's not connected anywhere. So I just need to decide what wires I'm using for what. So I know if, that when I do my uh, extension wire that connect to the same, the same uh, wires. So I think I'm gonna use, because this is wire here is red, I think I'm gonna use the red for the 24 volt. 
and then I'll use the green for the go and then the white for the stop. I think that's the way I'm going to go. So what we need to do is we need to stick some ferrules on. We need to stick some ferrules on these wires so we can get them connected. So we're going to strip a bit of this wire or sheath off this wire. And then we're going to put some ferrules on these. Now ferrules are good because what they do is they give you a, a nice constant connection and uh, easy to access, easy to fit. So these are ferrules, basically the same as what's already on there. Just a little insert that when you nip them up, they clamp up. So we're just going to twist these up a little bit, just so they thread through a little bit. And what you want to do, that want to be pushed all the way through the center there, just like that. And then you get your crimping tool, push that through the middle, and then just crimp it up. And that's how your ferrule is put on. Easy as that. A continuous connection, nice and secure, and uh, hassle free. So we're just going to ferrule all these free. need to make sure you've got plenty of wire through that center so when it crimps up the ferrule nips into it so you really want your wire so it just touches the end if not just pokes over the end a little bit so there we go just like that right so so we're now going to connect to these so we're going to do our red to our red like we said Actually, change my mind. I'm going to use the white as our 24 lead because then we've got red for go, I mean green for go, red for stop, which makes more sense to me. So we've just slackened that terminal off there. We're just going to run that ferrule in beside that one, making sure they're all pushed up nice and tight. Just snip that up like so. So we're going to have. The green going number four, because that's going to be our signal to our PLC. It's obviously green for go. So again, making sure it's all nicely nipped up. And then the last one's going to go in number two, which is our signal to tell our PLC that our emergency stop is either engaged or disengaged. Just making sure everything's tight. So that's our top one connected. Um, we left plenty of wire on there so that if we need to, we can bring our tub all the way down. So now we need to sort this one out. Um, and then we will, um, like I say, I'm waiting for the switch. So I can't really do a lot more on that. But um, I think what we'll do is We'll wait till the switch comes, which should be tomorrow, and we'll progress from there. But at the moment, it's looking good. What I thought I'd do is, while we was waiting for the other bits to come, I thought I'd do the two um, leads with the plug on. So what I've done is I've taken one apart. Um, it comes up in three parts. Obviously, we got the terminal bit that um, is the way we solder to. We've got the actual casing. And then we've got a little tiny clamp that clamps the cable. Um, this is held in place just by a single screw. So you've got like a little guideline there that that locks into. And then there's just a little tiny screw that goes in there to hold it in place, which I'll show you when I put it back together. Um, we need to make sure we obviously get the wires in the right place, because if not, the wires on the speak uh, remote stop start are not going to correspond with the wires that we've got already connected inside. So I ripped down on a old box my wires that I use. So the top one is the one we're using for our stop start. So red is in number one, two is number is white and three is green. If you look, I don't know if you'll see it on the camera, but if you look, you won't really see it. On here it's got one, two, three. So this is number one, this is number two, this is number three. So that's how we're going to um, connect. So number one will be red, number two will be white, number three will be green. And that should correspond then with our um, socket on the other side. But we can do a continuity check just to 
confirm that when we before we uh, put any power for anything and fire up. <coughs> Excuse me. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some solder on these terminals. I'm going to use my mole grips again just to clamp this up, just to hold this gently so I can get some solder on. Now we want to be careful because this is only plastic. We don't want to be putting too much heat through this to um, obviously melt the plastic. So we're just going to try and get it warm enough just to get our solder to it. It shouldn't, because it's not very thick, it shouldn't take a lot of heat. Um, obviously we don't want it too hot and melt. So just gentle passes on it just to get a little bit of solder on it. And then we'll solder our uh, wires like we did before so we're just going to put a little bit of solder on these wires just knit that up a little bit tighter so a nice flow on the wires if you haven't got enough um, solder on your wires it won't flow it'll just suck all the solder from your um, your other piece Right, so what we're going to do is red number one, so let's find number one. Number one is this terminal here, so that's this one here. So we'll just solder that on there first. And because we can't really get no heat shrink on, on these ones, uh, because there's not really enough room in the socket. I'd like to put heat shrink on them, but I can't. There's not enough room in the socket. So we're just going to get the wire as far down as we can get it. So it should eliminate any issues where they could touch. So number two is that one, which is our white wire. So we're going to put our white one on, on there. Let's say far enough down, so hopefully they're not going to, well, they shouldn't touch. There's no reason why they should touch. And then we'll just turn that for our number three. Just put a little bit more flux on that. There's not really a lot of solder on that one. Just put a little bit more on there. So I'm just going to use a screwdriver to hold that down because uh, it's quite short and I'll end up burning my fingers. So, so and there's number three. So I've now just noticed I've made a massive mistake because how am I now supposed to get that over there? So I'm going to have to cut it to length and then slide it all the way down. So make sure you put the count, the casing on over the top before you put the plug on. Stupid schoolboy error. So I'm just gonna pull off the wire that I want and then I'll thread it on for me around. So uh, I've cut it longer than what I want, but it's not an issue. Move solder out of the way. Right, so just lock this back in place so we're going to lock our got a little tab pinpoint there it's going to lock back in onto our uh, piece and then twist it's a little tiny screw the smallest screw in the world i don't know if you can see that little tiny screw there which i've now got to try and get in that hole there this the kit for these uh, sockets comes with this screwdriver which is great um, would have been better if it was magnetic but it's not but it's not a problem and then we've just got this going on this end which just clamps our wire to um, just secure the wire in the end there so just a couple of little screws in there as well like I say with big chunky fingers it's not the easiest thing to do So that's my first <clears throat> that's my first wire all done um, nice and secure it's not going to pull out of there this will be for the stop start so we'll coil this up and get this ready for when we connect to our stop start button like i said i'm still waiting for the potentiometer and um the switch to come so i'll get these wires ready and uh, as soon as they come we can move on 
to uh, do some connection. Um, you're perhaps asking the reason why I'm using two three pin plugs rather than just one six pin plug and using a piece of six core cable. The reason being is originally I wasn't gonna put a speed controller on the external or the remote stop start. But thinking about it, the, the, the speed controller was still behind my piece. So in the end I decided to bite the bullet and put a speed controller on the remote as well. Um, a lot of lathes only have it on the remote, have a speed controller on the remote, not on the machine as well. So, um, but I'm, I thought I'd put on both. That's the reason why I've gone for two threes because I already ordered the threes and I already ordered the four core cable before I decided to go for um, putting a speed controller on the external box or the remote box as well. But um, it's not a problem. What I will do is I will mark. I will color code these so they can't get mixed up because obviously the plugs are exactly the same and we don't want them plugged in the wrong places. Um, but what I will do is I will color code them so they can't get mixed up. So so if you're asking why I didn't use a six pin plug, that's the reason being. Right, so I'm gonna get this other one done and then I will come back to you once we have um, the second one all done. Just a little update of what I've done. I've actually now connected, this will be for our speed control or potentiometer. So what I've done is my second, second plug at the back there, this one here, I've brought that in and brought that into a block connector. This is gonna be mounted on the panel there, so it's secure out of the way. So I've brought that in and created some loop wires for that. So the wires coming in from there and it's gonna go back to my controller and then these wires that are in the controller are gonna come out and come in the other side of this, in the other side of this block connector. And then this wire will go to our switch to switch it between the two different speed controllers. Um, and then there'll be a feed wire coming from this, this one here, and the middle one, which is our brown wire. I've color coded these, so red, white, and orange. Same as I've color coded on there, so I don't get the wires mixed up. And then we will get them plugged into there. And then those will go into uh, this block connector, except for the five volt power, where the five volt power will go straight to our switch. So I'm just waiting on the switch now and the potentiometer to come so I can carry on. Um, I've made the two wires up which in here I've color coded one red, left the other one normal silver, so they're all done. All the wiring is done in there so far as I can go. Like I say, this will be glued or stuck with a sticky pad there, um, just so it's secure that it can't, you know, do anything and move anywhere. I have actually got some more, I've got some of these uh, sticky pads, so I might just put one of those on just cable tie up to that. But we'll see that, but that's long enough to reach up there. But yeah, can't do much more now until the um, other bits come. Hopefully they're gonna turn up today and we can get cracked on with it. I'm looking forward to uh, getting it up and running. I haven't done no turning for a while, so it'd be good to get the load back and go, but all going well. So just a little bit of an update. Yay, my bits have arrived. So this is the switch that's gonna go into our panel. So we've got um, central, which is Neva, then one side one, one side the other. Then I'll just um, mark them on the panel so we know which is which. So we've got to mount this in our panel. I'm thinking about having it so it's roughly in line with this start button. So it's going to be here somewhere. I think that'd be the best place to put it and it'll look neat and tidy. Not too far over because if we're just going to affect the um, controller. So we can't go too far over. So what I need to do is just work out roughly the space I require to get that in there. Double check, make sure we've got enough space and then drill our hole in there. But there's nowhere else really for it to go because of the space we've got within the case. Um, let me just move the camera up and you'll be able to see. So inside the case, there's quite a bit of space here and this is gonna, whoops, this will be here somewhere. So there's plenty of room for the wires to be tucked back out of the way. And um, we've got the power cables coming in there, but we can just put a, a sticky pad on the back there with a cable tie to keep those out of the way if we have to. 
but I think that is going to be the best place um, there. I don't know if you can see yet. Um, there is going to be the best place to fix it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some masking tape. We will mark on the can on the panel um, where we're going to drill it. We'll drill a pilot hole and then we'll drill it from the front. I think it's 22 mil, but I'll just double check it and then we'll get this mounted. So a bit of masking tape to start with just so we can mark where we want it. Just helps stop the drill bit slipping because we're going to put a pilot hole from this side. We need to get a pen or a pencil. So we've got a pencil. We need to work out. We want it roughly in line with our start stop or our start button. So it's round about there somewhere. So what we need to do is work out how far we can come out so it's not going to affect the controller and the uh, the start button. So I'll just grab a tape. So that is 30 millimeters across. So we need to be at least that away from our piece. Plus we want a bit of gap because we've got these wires. We want these wires bent over. So I reckon if we bring that, so half of 30 is 15. Um, so that's going to be dead on. So I reckon if we brought that 30 millimeters over, is that going to be too far maybe? So that would be about there. I just need to make sure that it's not going to affect our controller. So it's 100 millimeters away from, let's just move your camera back a bit harder really, because, all right, so it's 100 millimeters. So if we go 100 millimeters, it's here, so it's plenty of room away from our controller. So that is where we're going to drill our hole. So let's get a drill and a pilot drill bit and put a hole through there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to dot punch it. So it gives us a starting point. And then we're going to put our hole through. Of a pilot hole. Like that. We'll get our switch and measure our switch and see exactly how big a hole we want. So that's 21 and a half millimeters. So we're going to go for 22 millimeters. So I'm going to mark on my stepper piece the 22 millimeter mark, which is there. I always do this because it's easier to see because the actual writing on the stepper piece is very really faint. So it's easier to see doing it this way. So we're gonna go nearly all the way through on one side and then we'll finish off on the other side. you got is the case is flexing as we're drilling so make sure we've got nothing catching on the other side so just take a bit of tape off there so we got the last one Keep the rise out there. so that's our 22 millimeters so we're just going to go on the other side and deburr that because if not we'll end up going through so we're just going to get the hoover and hoover all that muck out of there so now our switch should fit so just a little tab to remove the switch. We can then unscrew the collar and put this through like so. 
put that back on there. Just do that tight. First this, so we're gonna just make sure our switch is central. Just move it up a little bit. So make sure our switch is central. I'm just gonna nip this up on the back here. Finger tight. So that is perfect. Now what we can do is we can now connect this back to it so it only lines up in one position or several will line up in more than one position but just lock our tab off now for the moment of truth we'll see if it'll fit should work fine should be well oops let's go yep so panel fits nice we've got a switch on here so that could be our panel which i'll put a little um i'll make some little markers up and put either side and then we can have this one as our external remote so that works well so now it's all right so we're going to put a ferrule on this end which is going to go on one side of our switch so I'll bring my ferrule back. So that's going to go on one side of our switch. So now we're going to loop back in to the other side of our switch. So we're going to cut that there. And we're going to strip that side. And we're going to put a ferrule on there. Now the good thing with these switches are that you've got enough room to get two ferrules in them or two wires one in each side so you've got plenty of room to loop them in and loop them out a bit like the existing ones on the stop start button so we're going to put a ferrule on this one so now what we can do is connect these up so we're going to bring these into 13 and 23 or terminals 13 and 23 and that will be looped in and looped out to our actually I suppose we all go the other way really because it's going to go in no that will be that way so that'd be fine no that'd be fine so then bring this into 23 with our second wire. So we want one in one side. Like so. And then the other one in the other side of, this, of the connector. Just knit those up. Don't do them really tight because you'll just strip the threads. But tight enough to be secure. Now this one's going to come into there so we're gonna cut that down a little bit just a little bit too long I'm gonna put a ferrule on this end And that's going to go into this one here which is our 5 volt feed from our controller right so what we're going to that's going to be bringing our 5 volt, 5 volt feed straight into our switch like so so we want our remote to be on one side of the switch. So that will be on this one, number 14. And that will be on that side. So we'll put that into 14. So that means our remote will be powered when we flick it over. And then 
the other one from here will come into this side. So that should work like that. So let's take off these wires out of here now. So that's off. Actually, I'm going to color code the, the, the ferrules as well so I know which one's which, which makes sense. Because if not, I'm going to struggle to know which is which because they all look the same. I always find it easier to color code or number and you know exactly which ones do what. <laughs> so there we go. So we'll put these ones in here. So brown is our five volt. Brown is our five volt. Should go into there if I'm big enough. Oh no, don't tell me all oh, no, that's all right. Thought the ferrules were too big for a minute. Fiddly with big chunky fingers. And then we've got our final one, red, which is our common. Not the easiest when you've got big chunky fingers. Gonna make sure they're all nice and tight so that will be that so what we've got to do is this um, orange one which is our 5 volt that needs to come to our switch but obviously it's not long enough to reach to there and to there so we're just gonna have to extend that a little bit so what we can use is what the color is that that's uh, orange so we use the white wire we'll try and keep all the colors of the wires the same so just extend that so I just check back on the footage and it's only got me up to connecting the um, white wire for the 5 volt feed no the 5 volt going from this potentiometer so I'm gonna just go through what I've just basically done so we connected we took the wires out of the controller and extended the five volt feed for this potentiometer um, in to put it into our switch to make sure it feeds from the one position on the switch. And then the other two wires we connected into our block connector, uh, the red and, the, and the, the white wire into there, which comes into the block connector, which then feeds the socket going to the remote switch or stop start and also then goes back to the um, controller so that's what we've done so far so we're ready now to test it to make sure that the onboard potentiometer still works correctly and then we can move on to doing the remote stop start control panel getting that wired and ready to test so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this panel back on uh, making sure that everything is out of the way so we're going to put that oops, on the bottom first, no, on the top first and then on the bottom. So it fits back nice and snug, which is what we wanted. So I'm then going to plug it in and turn it on. Give it a few seconds for the PLC or the inverter to boot up. So when we're on this position, over to this side, which I will put some marks on here. I'll put, I don't know, on internal, external or whatever. On it just so I know what it is well I know what it is but if other people ever come uh, so what we're gonna do so with it in that position this potential or speed control should still work so we'll turn the lathe on so that is working so speeding the lathe up and slowing it down 
So that's great. So we'll turn the lathe off because I don't know how it would cope with swapping it over um, between it running. And then we'll flip it over to the other side. Now this shouldn't work. No, it's not doing anything. And the reason being is because it's not getting five volts. It's not getting five volts to it. So the, the control panel or PLC or inverter, whatever you want, it's not recognizing that any ohm is coming back because there's no voltage going into it. So that's not working at all. So on that position, the external or the, the remote uh, potentiometer should work and vary the speed like that one does when it's in that position. So that works well. So I'm gonna leave it on that position just in case I come to it because I can guarantee I'm gonna use the lathe and have it there and go, oh, why is it not working? Why is it not working? But if I leave it on there, then I'll know. But what I will do is like I say, I'll put some marks on it. So, I'm, so perhaps one and two and then we'll perhaps put a one here and a two on the other one so we know which is which. But anyway, it's working, which is absolutely great. So we're gonna turn the power off the machine, take the plug out, so make sure it's safe. So as far as inside the cabinet is uh, done or concerned, we're all finished wiring in there really. Um, there's no other wiring to do in there. All the other wiring to be done is on the external remote or stop start control panel and um, then just wiring it up so we just plug into the back. So, but what I'm gonna do is I'm not actually gonna put the screws back into that until we know it's all working well. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna move on to the remote now and uh, get that wired and uh, see if we can get it to work external as well as we have internal. So at the moment, everything's looking good and I'm quite pleased. And that actually switch doesn't look out of place. It's in line with the stop start, so it looks, semi-professional and um, I'd like to think that people think if they ever came that it was all factory made so that's what I'm hoping for so anyway let's go over to the bench and have a look at the stop start right so controller this is the original controller I was going to use and I said that I was going to try and bring the speed controller through the side there which I thought might look a little bit strange so I've scrapped that idea and I bought this one this had a emergency stop, stop, and a start button. So what I've done is I've moved the start button, the start button to the middle, and I'm gonna put my speed controller, or potentiometer, in there. But as you can see, it's a bit big. So what I've had to do is, I've had to 3D print a insert to go inside there, which I'm gonna glue in, uh, and then our potentiometer will fit through there and be secure on there. Hopefully the glue's gonna hold up, well, the glue should hold it, okay. But what I've had to do is, because there's a little tiny securing lug on this potentiometer to stop it spinning, I had to create a little tiny, I don't know if you can see it really on that camera, um, a little tiny insert in there for that to sit in. So that locates into there, nice and tight. Um, so that will look, um, I don't know if that'll go in because of the wiring, oh yeah, it will go. So it should look something like that with the knob on it. Um, obviously we're not gonna have to get numbers on it, but it doesn't really matter. I don't use the numbers a lot anyway, you do it by sound and, and look. So that's the plan. So like I say, that controller wasn't very, wasn't really big enough. And I think coming out of the side looked a bit daft. So at least this way, all the, all the buttons are all together and it looks much neater. So I'm gonna get this glued in um, and then I will come back, once this is glued in and set, I will come back when we're ready to start to do the connections on the back. This switch is actually different to that one. That was an MVR switch. This is a signal uh, very similar to what's, or exactly the same as what's actually in the machine. machine. So these are just giving signals rather than um, like that was an MVR, which was only using part of that, where this one, we can use it exactly the same as what that is. So it's actually a better, uh, better control panel. I found this uh, when I was looking the other day and I wanted one. Uh, I found this, which is, like I say, exactly the same as that, which is a much better system rather than the MVR. So I'll keep the MVR for another dime. You never know if you want one on another machine. So, but yeah, it's, um, that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna get this mounted and um, I'll come back when we're wiring up. All glued in, um, insert all fitted. Just be aware, super glue activator actually melts this plastic, 
I've sprayed a bit on there and you can see it start, I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not, but it's actually started to melt some of that there. Um, and I wiped it and it's left score marks in it, but you, I can't do nothing about it now. I have actually cleaned up with a bit of a methylator spritz, hopefully to deactivate it. But um, anyway, yeah. So inserts will sit fit. I've super glued on the inside and the outside, um, put a bead around the outside before I stuck it in. And then I'll put some on the back as well, just to give it a bit more security. So before I f fit the speed controller to this, I want to put some solder on the uh, actual potentiometer. The reason being, it's going to be a bit more easier to do before um, it's in the in there than it is here. So what I'm going to just do is just solder some or put some solder onto these terminals, so that when we come to solder our wires on, it's not going to be so strenuous and. Um, it's going to be a lot easier to do. So we're just going to let that cool for a few seconds and then we're going to fit it into our piece which we need to locate that locking tab or that little tab there into our tab hole in the piece that we printed which is there like that. So that is in there like so. So what we can do now is we can put the nut and that onto there. So let's get the nut and the washer. So the kit I bought, I'll, I'll try and remember to put links in for all the pieces I bought, but I bought a box set of uh, potentiometers because I'm always gonna use them. And I thought it'd be worth it in the long run. So we're just gonna nip that up there, just get a pair of pliers and nip that up. So this doesn't need to be really, really tight, but obviously tight enough to be secure because it's only aluminium. It will strip if we're not careful. I think it's actually gone on cross-threaded there. I don't know why. Could be that the actual thing's not quite long enough to go through the, the uh, that's better. So just nicely nipped up. So now we're ready to solder our wires. It's a little bit awkward in there with the wires like that, but we can't really do a lot about it. I should have really put that in and then super glued it in place of the wires around a bit more, but it is what it is. We can't do anything now. So now we can do our wiring for our remote. So let's get the case for the remote. So now we can fit them into our gland. So we know which wire is which. So now we know that the, the red wire has got the um, yellow tape on it. So the red wire, or, ye or red, our red plug, yellow tape, is our start stop. And the other one is our potentiometer. So what I'm going to do is, we're going to do this one first. So I'm going to strip quite a bit off of this. Just remember when you're doing that, don't cut too deep because you will cut into your cables. But with a little bit of experience, you you learn how hard to push. And then this one, we're going to strip a bit off of this one as well. this off so now on some of these wires so just got a list again of what's what so we had on the top one which is our red plug which is our yellow tape we don't use the brown so what I'm going to do is save a little bit of confusion I know I'm going to keep it just in case, but to save a bit of confusion, I'm just going to get rid of it. And then on the other one, we don't use the green. So we'll get rid of the green on there. Like so. So what I'm going to do is I need to make a fly wire to go between, for the 24 volt, to go between um, 
my two switches and then again we've got the green for the start signal and the red for the stop signal so we just need to sort those out so what do i need to do i need to put some ferrules on these so strip these So due, because we want the white, which is our 24 volt, we're going to join the two white ones together on one side. That will just save having two ferrules in there. So that'll be a blue one. Clamp that up, and then these two will be black. Too fast, Steve. Corn. The different colours just mean that they're the thicker ferrule so you can get more wire in them. So what we need to do is just make a loop wire for this one. So we're going to cut this about there. And like I say, all this is going to do is just loop from one switch to the other to give us a 24 volt. So that'll be a black on there. So, so that now is ready to be connected to our switch. So now we're going to move on to the potentiometer. So I need to strip these and these ones are going to be soldered because the terminals are a little bit too small to um, have connectors on them and I don't want them vibrating loose. So I thought if I solder them on, They'll be more secure and uh, you should get better current for them being soldered than what you would do if they're uh, connected. So we're just going to put a little bit of solder on these wires. Like so. And we want some sleeve over those because we don't want those shorting out or catching or whatever. So we're going to put a little bit of heat shrink over those. So I'll just cut that here. I'm going to push that over to our wires. Like so. Now what we need to do is we need to get those over to there. So same as we did on the other one, we colour coded. So red wire, blank is uh, white wire, orange wire is brown wire. I've just, I have written down on here what they want to be. So, so we're going to solder those on first. So we're going to put that cable for a little bit further. Oops, heat shrink's just all fell off. And this is not going to be the, the most fun to connect, but what I might do, I might remove that switch just to make it a little bit easier to get to. So we'll just remove this switch temporarily, just to make it a little bit easier to get to. Just take that off there, that makes life just that little bit easier. So red is gonna go on first, which is gonna go on there. Now I do apologize move this back a bit so you can see so we're going to go red first i do apologize if you're not going to be able to see because i'm going to have to be leaning over to get them soldered on so that one onto there like so it's 
not very good. That one onto there, and then brown onto where the orange is. Like so. So removing that switch just makes that a little bit easier. So just gonna let them cool down a little tiny bit. And then we're gonna slide over our heat shrink. And that should just give it a little bit of security, exactly the same as what it has on the others. So let's get the blowtorch. Just to shrink these up a little bit, just like that. So that's the potentiometer connected. So now we can reassemble. Um, I think what I'm going to do actually, I'm going to put a sticky pad on there, hold that cable back, so that that doesn't, when we take it off, it doesn't stretch the wires and cause stress on the wires. So we'll put that on there, like that. We'll just put a little tiny cable tie in there. So just so what that does is it just causes no stress on there if we ever pull on it. So now we're going to put this on, which is now going to be a pain because we've got put the other way because we've got that on first. So that's on there. So we'll put this back on here. So, right, we're ready now to connect our switches. We've done the potentiometer, we're ready to connect our switches. So, we've got red is number two, white is number one, looped into number three, and green is number four, exactly the same as what our other end is so what we're going to do is we're going to do our loop first so we're going to do number one which is our 24 volt feed in so that's our 24 volt feed in Then that's going into number three, which is feeding our 24 volt for our start switch. Right, so just nip them up for now and then we'll come back and check, make sure they're tight. So then the green one's gonna go to number four, which is our signal wire to our Start the machine. And then our red wire is gonna to go to number two, which is our signal wire to say whether our uh, emergency stop is engaged or disengaged. So we're just gonna nip all these up now, just gently nip them all up. Not too tight, but tight enough so they're going to be nice and secure. Take any wires down that we may feel may get trapped. So they're all down out of the way. I'll push that around a little bit because that actually is not very... The emergency stop is not very tight. So let's just quickly take that off. See any trouble when you buy these items. Um, just double check everything because that is not tight yet. so over a period of time of turning that emergency stop on and off on and off that would cause issues and end up coming loose so we might as well tighten it up now or we've got it out then mess about with it later on so that is now nice and tight we we'll just clip that back over like so that will just screw Engaging. I'll just screw back in there like that. So 
So tuck that wire back down there out of the way. Tuck that wire down there out of the way. So now we can pull some of this wire back. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cable tie um, the inside of that because I don't want that pulling through there. So if I put a cable tie on that, then that should just stop that pulling through. So we'll put our case back on, get our screws in. So we'll just nip that up, just so it holds our wires tight. Just need to find a top for that. So I have yellow, orange, green, blue, or red. I think I'm gonna use a red one actually, I quite like red. So let's do, let's move that all the way around to negative. So we'll push that there and then that should open all the way up. Yeah, perfect. So that's our external or our remote stop start. So what's left to do now is plug it in and see if it works. Wish me luck. We have it all working, had to do a little bit of modification. The reason being on the speed controller, I broke the um, 12, no, the five volt feed rather than the feed signal wire from the potentiometer. So with that, I only could get the knobs to work if one was full up and then I could use this one. And then to use this one, I had to have this one full up and then you could veer it on this one. So going back and rethinking about it, looking at the wire diagram for the potentiometer, I found that if I break the signal wire for the potentiometer, rather than the 12 volt feed, it works the right way. So what I've done is I've done a little bit of alteration inside the cabinet, which I will just turn the machine off and show you. So I'll turn the machine off and plug it. We'll just let it discharge a little bit and we'll take the cabinet off. So what I've done rather than the 12 volt, um, sorry, the five volt feed coming from there, going into our switch, we're now breaking the signal wire that goes back to the uh, PLC or Inver, whatever you want to call it. So what I did is I changed the brown wire, which was in the, 20, the five volt side. I've now brought that into the signal side, loop that into both sides of my switch. And these, the signal wire from the remote um, controller is going into one side of the switch, and then the signal wire for the other side for the for the controller on the on the control panel or variable speed on the control panel is going into the other side of the switch. So now they're both independent, uh, still being fed with the same five volts, and they're working independent to each other, which was looked better than was before. So with that let's put the cover back on and we'll try it so plug it back in turn the switch on so the only thing i have noticed is that i've got to have if i want to use the control panel here this emergency stop has to be pushed in the reason being is because if i open that it's they're still getting a signal from this switch to the plc or invert to say that there's an emergency stop still open you could most probably change that inside the PLC, which I will have a look at. Um, but at the moment, I'm quite happy just to have that emergency stop pushed in all the time. So if we want to use this controller, this start and stop, we have that switch on that side. We open that one and then the label start, as you can hear. You can see it rotating here. And then this speed controller works. Perfect. So stop it on there. So if we want to use this controller, we can disengage the emergency stop and we can start the lathe on this side, but this won't do anything. We can still use this speed controller. So if I'm using it as normal turning, I can still use this remote start and stop, but I can't use that speed controller because of that. So if I want to use this speed controller, pushing that emergency stop and stop the machine, flick over my switch to that side, Press my, my start button, and now this varies my machine speed. 
which I am really pleased with. This one doesn't do anything because I've broken the signal now that goes to the PLC. So these are working both perfectly well. So again, push that in and it stops the machine, making sure this emergency, and to be honest, excuse me, you're not going to have both emergency stops open anyway, because if you've stopped it on that panel, it's going to be pushed in anyway. So it's just a, a non-issue. So if you have that one open and that one open, start machine is at a start, but it won't stop because it's still getting a signal from this one. So if I push that one in, that'll stop the machine. But like I say, you're only going to have one open at a time. If I'm using this panel, this one's going to be open. If I'm using this panel, this one's going to be open. So it's not a major issue. Um, you could most probably get over that by putting a relay, a switch over relay on it. But to be honest, I'm quite happy with having two emergency stops. It's um, more of a safety procedure than anything else. So I'm really happy with that. So the last thing to do is just to put my magnets to the back here and um, fix it to where I'm going to fix it to. I'm really, really pleased how this has turned out. Um, it's not. It's been a little bit of thinking, um, but nothing's impossible. But I'm glad, so glad now that I've got a remote start. So what I'm going to do is these cables, I'm going to put some uh, wrap around these cables so they're both together. I've got some tubing wrap that we use on the 3D printers. So I'm going to put that inside that so both the cables are running together. And then we've got it so it's all secure and tight. So like I say, I'm going to put a couple of magnets on this. I'm going to get cleared up and I will come back once everything's tidied up and ready to rock and roll. Just thought I'd show you around the back here where our cables come in. So we've got those two nice neat little sockets. Um, I've colour coded them so we've got red and I put a red dot on the top there so we can't get them mixed up really. This one was for our stop start and this one was for our variable speed. I've put some of this reinforcing cable sheath over the cable so they don't get chafed. And I've also just cable, I've used a sticky pad and cable tied it to the back there just so it's taken the the sag out of those cables so it doesn't pull on those cables so I think that's going to be good this thing going down the back there with the rest of the wires ready to uh, be mounted where we're going to go machines all back together workshops tidy so time to review on what we've <laughs> done um, like I said when I've done the outboard turning kit my main issue was the safety aspect of reaching over my piece to start and stop on the machine that's when I came up with the, the the idea of trying to do a remote stop start. Um, I was only originally going to just do the stop and start. I wasn't going to do the variable speed side of things. But when I thought about it, more thought about it, I thought it's going to be better to do the stop start and the variable speed on the remote. So I'm still not having to reach over my piece or over, yeah, over the moving piece to turn up or slow down the machine. So... As we said from the start, if you're not competent in doing electrical work or you don't feel safe or you're not 100% sure what you're doing, then please, please don't attempt to do this. Um, get someone who is competent to do the job for you. Um, it's not worth hurting yourself or damaging your machine about trying to do it because it is possible to damage that inverter or even electrocute yourself. So please be safe and please be, um, you know, you're responsible for your own safety and please be sensible about it. Uh, also, obviously, if your machine's still under warranty, don't attempt to do this because any wiring alterations will affect the warranty on your machine. And then if anything does happen to it, you're not going to be covered through the warranty. So please be aware of that as well. So we have now got our external, uh, or should I say our remote stop start and variable speed. I've actually put some uh, reinforcing casing around the cables just in case with a bit of movement they're going to chafe through so this is uh, like a, a netting that goes over your cables just to protect it so i've done the cables right back to the machine uh, as you saw a little while ago the plugs are all nice and tidy in the back there and um, they're color coded so they can't be put in the wrong place because obviously there's the same pin but i think to be perfectly honest i'm not actually going to remove them i might leave them in most of the time anyway so other than that they're ready to go so on our remote, um, I was a bit miffed that when I first started to, well, when I first tried it, that I had to have uh, at least one of the stops pushed in so the other one worked. But now I'm thinking about it, it's actually quite a good safety thing because um, if, say for instance, I was using the e-stop here and I accidentally lent on and pressed the start button here, then the lathe might start. So 
to be honest, if one of them's got to be pushed in and then you're pushing the other one to stop it, to me, that's double safety and more safer the, rather than, you know I mean? It takes away that little risk uh, factor, which I'm quite pleased with, to be honest. So we saw that we put a rocker switch on here for the different uh, speed controllers. Now, I wired them up originally so we was breaking the 5-volt feed to them, which I thought was going to work. But when I worked, when I had a play with it, it didn't work. What it was doing is, if I wanted to use the speed controller on here, I'd have to have this one turned right up, and then vice versa, which didn't work very well. So then I sat back and looked at the drawing, or the wiring diagram for the potentiometers, or the speed controllers. Um, the actual signal wire was terminal two, and I thought, well, if I break the signal wire, then no signals coming from that uh, speed controller, so there shouldn't be a conflict in the speed controllers. So what I did is I changed the wires over, which I showed you a little while ago, and that works absolutely perfect. Now, both speed controllers are independent to each other, so I don't know why I tried to break the 12 volt or the 5 volt feed. I don't know why I just didn't break the signal wire, but you know, you have these brain fogs and eventually you crack the, the situation. So anyway, so if we want to use the speed control on this, on the original panel now, we're going to have uh, my rocker switch to that position, say the 11 o'clock position. So now we can use the speed controller on here and this one doesn't do anything, nothing at all. So if we want to use the speed controller on this panel, we can still use this on and off burn, but this speed controller works on this panel. This one doesn't do anything. Perfect. So we've got, we've cracked the speed controller. So now if I want to use this panel, these buttons are the ones I use. So emergency stop out, press my start, press my emergency stop in, stops my machine. If I want to do this one, do exactly the same. If I have this one out and this one out and start the machine, if I press this one, machine still carries on going because it's still getting a 12 volt, no, 24 volt signal from this e-stop saying that the e-stop is actually disengaged. So, if I push that one, it stops them both. Now I have to have both of them pushed in to stop the machine, which like I said a little while ago, is I think it's a great safety feature, and I think it's better that way. You could perhaps overcome that by putting a relay in it, but to be perfectly honest, I'm quite happy um, using two e-stops. So I'm happy with the way that works. Um, I was just going to put the magnets on the back here so I could fix it to the machine but the magnets I've got haven't really got a lot of grab and power to them, so I've ordered some stronger magnets. It's obviously Christmas Eve today, so they're not gonna be here for a couple of days. They'll perhaps be here the middle of next week. So as soon as I get those on, I will get those on and the project will be finished. So other than that, I think this is a Kraken project. Uh, it's gotta be one of the best projects I've done on the lathe uh, or modifying to the lathe. And I hope you guys agree that this is a great asset to any lathe uh, out there and I would imagine you could virtually install this to any lathe that is out there that already doesn't have a remote stop start I personally think all lathes or all good lathes should come with a good with a stop start uh, I know the record power CL4 is more of a budget lathe but I still think it should come with a stop start especially if you're going to do the outboard turning because it's a safety feature but other than that I'm really pleased with this, really, really pleased. I'm really glad it worked. Well, I knew it would work, but it was just a case of getting your head around it to do the to do the electrical side of things. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. I apologize if the video is a little bit too long, but obviously there's a lot of information to cram into it. I'm not sure how long it's gonna be because obviously I've just recorded it and I haven't edited it yet. So we don't know how long it's gonna be, but I will keep it to the, mere, the minimum that I can. So if you guys, any of you guys do this, then please, Stick a video up of it, send us some pictures, and uh, let us know how you get on. Um, if I remember, I will try and stick the link for all the items that I used in the description below. Um, but if I haven't, or if I forget, and you want to know anything, message me, and I will send you uh, as much information as I can. So other than that, guys, thank you very much for coming and watching. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope it's been a bit of an eye-opener for you. And uh, thanks for coming and watching another video on the channel. Other than that, Take care, speak to you soon, and bye for now.